third set of teeth. Japanese scientists have found a way. A Japanese team of scientists has developed a therapy that could grow new teeth. In the work two years ago, scientists showed that it is possible to stimulate the eruption of new teeth of the third generation after milk and permanent teeth by inhibiting the action of one of the genes. Human clinical trials on a therapy to restore missing teeth are scheduled to begin next year. In March 2021, the journal Science Advances published a paper by scientists from Kyoto University and Fukui University describing the effect of the antibody to the USA G1 gene, which can stimulate tooth growth. Studies have shown that the USA G1 protein reduces tooth growth in mice. By turning off the gene that codes for protein production, the mice's teeth began to grow back. In further research, the researchers developed a neutralizing antibody therapy that was able to block the function of the protein, stimulating the mice to grow new teeth. Later experiments showed the same benefits in ferrets, which have a more similar dental pattern to humans. Animal studies are good, especially in the early stages. But the researchers now want to see if their treatment works in humans as well. As reported by the Japanese newspaper Mainichi, Clinical trials are scheduled to begin in 2024. Incomplete teeth can be a source of embarrassment or discomfort in dealing with the environment. Above all, however, it can make it difficult to eat certain foods, which in turn has a negative impact on their ability to eat healthily. For example, in the United States, over 35% of people aged 65 and older have only 8 or fewer teeth. In turn, according to data from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 17%. Seniors have lost all their teeth. That is why the research of Japanese scientists should be considered so important. They can restore completely natural teeth to such people, and thus the comfort of life without the use of any implants or prostheses. The first swallow in this topic appeared in 2021. Then a team of researchers from the Japanese Kyoto University and the University of Fukui published research results that showed that one of the proteins is able to limit the formation and growth of new teeth in mice. In turn, when the gene responsible for the production of this protein, called USAG1, was turned off, the mice gained a natural ability to replace their teeth. The researchers chose to focus on the USAG1 protein because it produces two types of molecules, known as BMP, bone morphogenetic protein, and WNT, which play an important role in the development of new teeth. In further work, scientists have developed a drug that, thanks to the antibodies contained in it,
is able to block the adverse effects of USA G1. And again, success was noted in this field. New teeth began to appear in the rodents. It is important here that the drug developed by the Japanese has also proven effective in the case of ferrets. It should be emphasized that the dental profile is more human-like and, like us. They are diphyodots, which means that they have a set of deciduous teeth which are later replaced by permanent teeth. The results of animal studies have shown promise. The next step is to implement analogous actions in relation to people. And these are already planned. According to recent press releases, clinical trials would start as early as 2024. However, even in the case of positive results of these studies, it is estimated that the treatment would become available to the population no earlier than 2030. The very mechanism of formation of new teeth as a result of the applied therapy would be similar to the one we deal with in children who have lost milk teeth. The creators of this method call the process triggered in this way the regeneration of th Lightning strikes may have played an important role in the origin of life on Earth. The question of how life on Earth originated has been debated for years. Scientists have long believed that meteorites provided the key ingredients for the development of life on our planet. New research suggests that the first lightning strikes were just as important in creating ideal conditions for life. Minerals delivered to Earth in meteorites more than 4 billion years ago have long been considered crucial to the development of life on our planet. But new research suggests that lightning may also have contributed to creating ideal conditions for life. Researchers from Yale University and the University of Leeds have described in a paper published in Nature Communications how lightning strikes to be precise, billions of such strikes may have produced the phosphorus necessary for life. How did the phosphorus needed to make the first DNA and RNA molecules appear on Earth? Phosphorus is essential for life and plays a key role in all life processes, from movement to growth and reproduction. But the element present on the early Earth was found in minerals that do not dissolve in water. Scientists believe that the phosphorus, which was used to build the first DNA and RNA molecules, came from a mineral called Schreibersite, Fe, Ni, 3P, which is soluble in water.
It could have got to Earth along with some meteorite. But scientists have long been puzzled by the abundance of phosphorus on the young Earth. Scientists believe that the epoch in which life began to emerge was not a period of intense meteorite bombardment of the Earth. So they suspected that the phosphorus may have had a different source. This work helps us understand how life could have originated on Earth, and how it can continue to form on other Earth-like planets, says Benjamin Hess of Yale University. Hess and his colleagues studied an exceptionally large and pristine sample of fulgurite, a formation filled with silica glaze formed by the melting of quartz sand after a lightning strike. The test sample was created when lightning struck a property in Glen Ellen, Illinois, U.S. in 2016 and was donated to the Geology Department of nearby Wheaton College. Using various spectroscopic imaging techniques, scientists discovered a large amount of a very unusual mineral, shribosite, in the sample. Most models of how life could have originated on the Earth's surface conjure up meteorites that carried small amounts of shribosite. In our work, we show that relatively large amounts of shribosite are also found in fulgurite which is formed after a lightning strike, Hess explains. Lightning strikes the Earth frequently, which means that the phosphorus needed for life on our planet's surface is not solely dependent on meteorite strikes. Perhaps more importantly, it also means that the formation of life on other Earth-like planets is possible long after massive meteorite bombardment, adds Hess. The team estimated that the amount of phosphorus produced by lightning strikes exceeded that from meteorites when the Earth was about 3.5 billion years old. Around the age of the earliest known microfossils. This makes lightning strikes likely to have played an important role in the origin of life on the planet. What's more, lightning strikes are much less destructive than meteorite strikes meaning they didn't disrupt the delicate evolutionary pathways that may have led to the development of life. A massive meteorite bombardment is a one-time event. When the planets reached a considerable size, the amounts of phosphorus delivered by meteorites were negligible. Lightning, on the other hand, is not such a one-time event. If the atmospheric conditions are conducive to the formation of lightning discharges, 
the elements necessary for the emergence of life can be delivered to the planet's surface. This means life could emerge on Earth-like planets at any time. Says Dr. Jason Harvey of the University of Leeds. Using a computer model, scientists have estimated that in the early history of our planet, between 1 billion and as many as 5 billion lightning bolts struck the Earth each year. Currently, we only have 560 million lightning strikes a year. If the period of analysis is extended to about a billion years, there is a huge number of lightning strikes, and therefore also a huge amount of phosphorus, which could then help form DNA, RNA and other biomolecules.